So this next little lecture is going to be on structuring your body points. One of them is going to be more similar to what we've been doing in our past speeches with multiple subpoints. And then the other is gonna be written more like a standard essay where you have one real point per body paragraph. The differences are between these are called two by two and three by one structure. You need to know the difference. So two by two and three by one. The first number, the two or the three, stands for how many body points you have. So in the case of a two by two, how many body points would we have? Two. One and two. In a three by one, if the first number indicates how many body points we have, how many body points do we have? Three. two by two, and three by one. The second number, if the first number refers to the number of main body points, the second number refers to the number of subpoints. So in a two by two, we have two subpoints. We're gonna have an A and a B. And we're gonna have an A and a B. In a three by one, each one only has one real subpoint. Now we know from the constant critiques I've put on your outlines, you can't have a dangler. There's only one real point, but we'll talk about what your ghost subpoint is. And so instead of marking it as an A, because there is no B, we're going to have a single example. In a two by two, you only have to have two arguments, two because statements, right? Because blank, because blank. In a three by one, you have to have three arguments. That may be slightly harder to think of three arguments instead of two arguments, but there's balance here. How do we know? Well, in a two by two, I may only have to come up with two arguments, but I have to come up with two examples per argument. There are two different ways to structure those. We'll talk about that in a second. I'll write them on the board for you for now. One is called double example. It is where you literally have both subpoints or different examples, TV shows, movies, books, theory, like, well, no, we're gonna do theories in a second, but ideas, phenomenons, that support that point. And then the other is called theory application. In a theory application, you provide a theory, social, political, psychological, whatever, scientific theory, and then you provide an example or an application of that theory into the real world. So for example, Darwin's theory of evolution, you would give a brief synopsis, who, what it was, what it means, and then you would give an example. So there are certain bird populations within our lifetimes that we have seen do uh, go through what is called like microevolutionary processes where bird beaks have changed within a species due to the availability and types of nuts available, like in their natural habitats. Great. You could apply Darwin's theory of evolution, which includes both micro and uh, macro and micro evolution, and you could apply it to a microevolutionary concept in the real world today. That's technically an example, and you could also use that in a double example format with something else, that's fine. Maybe uh, your because statement is because the world is constantly changing. Okay, evolution would fit into that. The world is constantly changing. Is the point of evolution that the world is constantly changing or the, that the world is stagnant? Well, it's clear that it's constantly changing is the point of that evolutionary theory. It does not matter whether or not you agree with the theory. 
The idea is, are you able to critically think about what a theory means and apply it to a real, real world situation? So double example, theory application. We'll get more in depth on that when we start working on your impromptu journal. The three by one has three because statements, but only one example each. The difficulty is you are going to have to spend more time explaining the example, tying the example back to the because statement, and then tying it back to your overall thesis. In a two by two, because you have two points, you still do need to tie those back to the because statement and then to the thesis, but it's a lot shorter. It is quicker, okay? All right, so two by two and three by one. We're gonna look at a speech in a minute that uses some of these arguments, and I'm going to outline them now for you so that you can be listening for them when you watch the video. So in one that was about a theory application, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this one. This is the double example I'm erasing. We're gonna leave theory application down here so you know what we're doing up here. The because statement was that it respects minority narratives. So because it respects minority narratives. Now, you do not need to know what the interpretation was or what the thesis was to understand how a point structure works. You don't need it. I'm going to tell it to you anyway. The quotation was about humbling yourself. It was about when you start feeling, I don't have the exact quotation off the top the tip of my tongue, but it was something about when you start feeling like a big deal. Just remember how many times you've had to explain speech to your parents. Keep in mind, the audience here is a group of speech people. But this could apply to anything. How many of you have played a lot of video games? Did your parents understand your obsession with that video game? Did they understand that if you had a high score, what that high score meant? I was like, oh, good job, Gannon. I don't know. Right? Did they really get it? No. So when you start feeling basically like a big deal, like, oh, look at me. All right? I'm hot stuff. I'm so good at this. We have to remember to humble ourselves because... How many times have we had to explain our accomplishments to someone and have them just not get it over their head? So it is a quotation about, in my opinion, humbling yourself and reminding that you have to provide context. Now, the national champion of that year on that quotation discussed how it was about contextualizing our experiences. So Shane, you do automotive work. What is the most impressive car repair that you've done? Do you think we would get it? No. No, you would know. Would other automotive guys know? Depending. Depending. Maybe show like before and after. We, we will see kind of just the exterior. Like, oh, yes, that is now a smooth and shiny exterior of a vehicle. But do any of us have an understanding of what goes into getting that car or boat or whatever it is looking great again? No. So if you were to explain to us, as you did in your demo speech, about how to repair you know, an exterior, I don't even know what the words are, right? An exterior piece of damage, you have to contextualize it for us. For those of you who are really good, so back in my day it was Halo, right? If you were really good at Halo, we had all these achievements and status ranks. But um, if you didn't play the game, if you weren't into that sort of thing, it would take a lot of time explaining not just, oh, well, I was the best at da 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 It was, I was the highest ranking here, 
but here's what it involves, here was it, what it required, here's how many hours it took to accomplish. Does anyone just walk into, what is the new popular one, Fortnite? Does anyone just walk into Fortnite on their first day and like, oh, yep, I'm totally the best at this game? No. No one walks into automotive repair and is like, boom, I learned it all in a day. I am the best. No one becomes an Olympic gymnast overnight. But if you have no idea what gymnastics is, now granted, I would hope all of you have an idea of what gymnastics is, at least in this society. But if you didn't, would you know how awesome it was? Would you know at what age, developmentally, kids should be able to do cartwheels? Leading up to a gymnastic Olympian? You wouldn't know. Like, oh, great, that looks fantastic. If your child is in ballet, how do you know when they actually have really, really good feet for ballet, really good form for ballet? I don't know. Most parents are just like, oh, you did this. Woo! Good job, kiddo, which is fine because kids need that sometimes. But if your kid really had the talent, how would you know? You can't be an uninvolved parent or spectator in that instance. You have to be educated about the context in which something exists. So in this example, we discussed that background. First, because it respects minority narratives, this idea of contextualization. The national champion uses theory application. He uses the theory of historical particularism. 